this is Frode and welcome to Actualize Notes TV, where I deliver five big ideas that we can use to actualize our potential. Today we have another great book, The Practicing Mind by Thomas M. Stirner. The Practicing Mind. Subtitle, Developing Focus and Discipline in Your Life. Thomas Stirner has studied both Eastern and Western philosophy and modern sports psychology. For over 25 years, he has been the chief concert piano technician for a major performing arts center while operating a piano manufacturing facility. Aside from that, he is a private pilot, which I just find to be ex awesome. So if you want to develop focus and discipline in your life, you dig this book. I highly enjoyed it, and especially the idea about the observer, which I'll go into about in the fifth big idea. Five ideas. If you have any questions, you can just comment them below the video. Now, fellow actualizer, let's get started with the first big idea, attention. So uh, Thomas talks about, um, gives us a story, and he uses it to, uses it to distinguish between a disciplined and an undisciplined. mind. The story is about a chariot rider, an ancient story really, who has four horses that represent our minds. The undisciplined driver goes down his path and has a goal, and uh, all the horses are just running wild, they are exhausting themselves, running in all different directions, straying off from the path all the time. They never know where they are or where they are going, and this is very exhaust exhausting for them. And they finally arrive, but that's just after they have spent a lot of time, energy, and have uh, uh, gotten fatigued. But the undisciplined driver, on the other hand, directs his four horses down the chosen path, without getting all distracted and straying off the path, doing all different kinds of things at the same time. Now he st focuses on the one path he's going, and they arrive in the least amount of time effort and fatigue resulting from that. And this is again a metaphor for our minds. What we need to do is we need to let go of distractions because if we don't we are just like the four horses with the disability driver going in all different directions. And really the key facet of distractions is multitasking. Barbara Oakley echoes the same wisdom in A Mind for Numbers where she says that multitasking is like constantly pulling up a plant this kind of a constant shifting of your attention may, means that new ideas and concepts have no time, have no uh, chance to take root and flourish. So really, we want to let go of multitasking. And these are uh, all of the programs that you have up, all the push notifications, all the email, the text messages that you allow your mind to get distracted from when you're doing important work. So how can you do this? How can you cultivate your attention like a disciplined driver by only focusing on the chosen path, leaving push notifications off and letting the TV off, focusing your mind? Next big idea, process versus product. These are really two different ways of thinking. When you focus on the product of something, you focus on what you want to achieve far into the future. It's that finished uh, essay, it's a finished exam, it's a finished math problem, but when you're focusing on the process of something, the, um, you're only focusing on what you have to do right now to achieve that future, but while, while not stressing about that future. And really, there is a paradox about these two ways of thinking, because when you focus on the process of something, the product takes care of itself with fluid ease, without any stress that you need if you focus on the product. But while, as you focus on the product, you are constantly distressed, you are fighting yourself, and you experience boredom, unrest, and fatigue. All of the things we don't want to experience when you, ha when you need to focus. And one of the best ways of uh, focusing on the process? Well, it's what Barbara, Barbara Oakley calls the Pomodoro effect. And it's got three easy steps. One, we need to let go of distractions, 
remove everything, uh, all we leave our phone off or uh, with no sound, airplane mode, and we keep the TV off. We um, and then the next step is to set a timer. The normal time is 25 minutes, but you can choose for however long you want. But don't make it over an hour, because that results in fatigue too, without any breaks. Third step, we need to focus. You focus only on what you're doing, the task in front of you. You don't go to uh, take a bathroom break, you don't uh, turn the TV on, and you don't go for a glass of water. You only focus on what you're doing, but in the breaks, with the five minute breaks, for example, you can uh, rest and do other things. But this is still a good way to focus on the process and not product. Leave distractions, set a timer, and focus. And just repeat. Then, the third big idea is flowers. When do you think a flower is in its perfect stage of growth? When it's a small seed? When it's uh, sprouting? or when it's fully bloomed? The answer? It's always perfect. Do you think a flower would say, Oh God, this is exhausting. First I have to push through all of this dirt. Then when somebody waters me, I get soaking wet every single time and covered with all, with all this mud. When do I get to bloom and become a full-blown flower? Oh no, wait, I want to become an oak tree that looks down on all of those other flowers. But it takes so much time. No, it doesn't say that. It knows it's perfect all the time. And uh, Thomas says that we are perfect when we are where we are and absorbed in what we are doing right at that moment. He also uses the example of high performing achiever, high performing uh, athletes and uh, any kind of high performing people. He says that their idea of perfection always moves away from them. When they become as good as the, what they think is perfection, it moves away from them. And Grant Cardone echoes the same wisdom in Be Obsessed or Be Average, where he says that even after thousands of times of doing something, you will still find ways to improve, because every time you do something, you understand the process better. So, by the way, wouldn't it be really boring if we could, we could become perfect in doing anything? We would, we would have no room to grow, we would just, we'd just be perfect, and do it perfect every single time. We couldn't become any better. But that would fight against a basic human fact. We need to grow if we want to experience happiness. As Tony Robbins always says, progress equals happiness. If you can make progress, even with just a little bit, you are happy. So, we want to be like the flower, we are always perfect, and like the high-level uh, performers, the, having the idea of perfection always moving away from us, but we still strive for it. Next big idea, worrying. Thomas uh, explains a very common scenario when uh, he's uh, listening to his internal dialogue with what he's thinking, and he uh, focuses on uh, he notices that he is thinking about paying the bills, composing a musical piece, while also solve, trying to solve a problem. And all of this, while he's standing and taking a shower. His thoughts are uh, on all unrelated things from what he's doing right now. And he's got a word for this. It's called worrying. I mean, if worrying is when you think about what you should have done differently in the past, without trying to um, use it to improve what you do in the future. Worrying is when you think that what you're doing right now won't have any value in the future, so it's no use doing it at all. And worrying is when you anticipate the future, and uh, questions that haven't yet been asked. And what's Thomas's advice to stop worrying? Well, he has a great quote. If uh, you can stay focused, if you can force your mind to stay in the present moment, and to stay present, and to stay in the process of what you're doing, I promise you, many of your problems will melt away. And th this is really useful, because if you aren't thinking about the future, and you aren't thinking about the past, the only way of thinking you can think about is what you're doing right now, and that's most efficient, focusing on the process and not the product. 
So if you want to quit worrying, focusing on what, focus on what you're doing right now. Last big idea, the observer. I just love this idea. The uh, Thomas says that uh, we, our mind consists of two parts. We have the ego and we have the observer. Our ego is one who is doing all the thinking, talking and all the doing. And our observer is the one who just um, observes everything that happens without getting annoyed. It's the one who doesn't judge anything that happens. It, he just sees it as it is. It just happens. And the observer is the one who is quietly aware of who you really are. Without having your ego just think and talk and uh, think about who you really are. The ego is really the one focusing on the product, what you all what you to have achieved. The observer focuses on the process, how it can achieve it right, how it can do what it's doing right now in the best way. Also, yes, I uh, have a pretty relevant story about using the observer. Anytime, uh, so I usually uh, ride my bike all year round without any spikes, even in the winter. So every single winter I usually fall uh, a few times. So it hurts a bit and I can see the people uh, looking at me while I'm fumbling about and trying to get on my bike again. But the best part of it is I don't get angry. I think to myself, it didn't hurt that bad. Also, these are just clothes. I got wet, but uh, how will I care in tomorrow? And also, I, uh, I just hope that uh, those who saw me got uh, a bit amused by it. And uh, I'm able to laugh at it using the observer. Anyway, that uh, was a bit unrelated. And uh, Thomas says there are many ways to cultivate your observer and develop him. And one of the best ways is to meditate. Because when you meditate, your awareness of what is happening around you and in your head will develop itself over time, arise on its own. And the way you meditate is really simple. I've been successfully doing it for over six months now. 20 minutes every single morning when I wake up. So the way you do it is sit down in a quiet place and you sit with dignity. You sit straight up. Then you, and you close your eyes. Then you set a timer for about 5 to 20 minutes. I would recommend 5 in the beginning to get into it. Then you focus on your breath, only on the sensation between your nostrils, of so the breath going in and out. Next, when your mind wanders to unrelated thoughts, for example, what you're going to do tomorrow, what you did yesterday, or what you're going to have for dinner today, then you just bring your focus back to your breath, between uh, in your nostrils, and you just repeat until uh, the timer goes off. This will help you cultivate your observer, observing things that happen without having to get hurt about everything and judge it. Worrying, we can stop worrying about fo by focusing on what we're doing right now. Flowers, we, a flower is always perfect, so are we, and the idea of perfection at the same time is always moving away from us. Process versus product. If you focus on the product, you experience stress and fatigue. If you focus on the pro process, the product will take care of itself with fluid ease. Attention. We want to cultivate our attention by being that disciplined driver who directs his focus down the chosen path, and leaves distractions and multitasking off. So that was a quick look at the practicing mind. Thank you for writing it, Thomas Turner. I hope you enjoyed it and that you can continue to actualize your potential so we can change the world together. Thanks for watching. Look forward to sharing more. Have another awesome day. See ya.